we can hear your quiet song. Love that fills the night with wonder, love that warms the weary soul, love that bursts all chains asunder, set us free and make us whole.
Let the incense of our repentant prayer ascend before you, O Lord, and let your loving kindness descend upon us, that with purified minds we may sing your praises with the church on earth and the whole heavenly host, and may glorify you forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Psalm 53. The fool has said in his heart, there is no God. All are corrupt and commit abominable acts. There is none who does any good. God looks down from heaven upon us all to see if there is any who is wise, if there is one who seeks after God. Everyone has proved faithless. All alike have turned bad. There is none who does good, no, not one. Have, have they, they no knowledge, knowledge those evildoers, evil who eat up my people like bread and do not call upon God? See how greatly they tremble, such trembling as never was. For God has scattered the bones of the enemy. They are put to shame because God has rejected them. Oh, oh that, that Israel's, Israel's deliverance would, would come out of Zion. Zion. When God restores the fortunes of his people, Jacob will rejoice and Israel be glad. Glory, Glory to, the to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Second Thessalonians chapter 1. Paul, Silvanus, and Timothy, to the church of the Thessalonians in God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. We must always give thanks to God for you, brothers and sisters, as is right, because your faith is growing abundantly and the love of every one of you for one another is increasing. Therefore, we ourselves boast of you among the churches of God 
for your steadfastness and faith during all your persecutions and the afflictions that you are enduring. This is evidence of the righteous judgment of God and is intended to make you worthy of the kingdom of God for which you are also suffering. For it is indeed just of God to repay with affliction those who afflict you and to give relief to all the afflicted as well to us when the Lord Jesus is revealed from heaven with his mighty angels in flaming fire, inflicting vengeance on those who do not know God and on those who do not obey the gospel of our Lord Jesus. These will suffer the punishment of eternal destruction, separated from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of his might, when he comes to be glorified by his saints and to be marveled at on that day among all who have believed because, of our, because our testimony to you was believed. To this end, we always pray for you, asking that our God will make you worthy of his call and will fulfill by his power every good resolve and work of faith, so that the name of our Lord Jesus may be glorified in you and you in him, according to the grace of our God and the Lord Jesus Christ. In many and various ways, God spoke to his people of old by the prophets. Now, now in these, in these last, last days, days, he has, has spoken, spoken to us by his Son. <laughs>
In peace let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For Dan, our bishop, for all pastors in Christ, for all the servants of the church, and for all the people, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For our public servants, for the government and those who protect us, that they may be upheld and strengthened in every good deed, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For those who work to bring peace, justice, health, and protection in this and every place, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For those who bring offerings, those who do good works in this congregation, those who toil, those who sing, and all the people here present who await from the Lord great and abundant mercy, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For favorable weather, for an abundance of the fruits of the earth, and for peaceful times, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For our deliverance from all affliction, wrath, danger, and need, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the faithful who have gone before us and are at rest, let us give thanks to the Lord. Lord have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Rejoicing the fellowship of St. Mary, the mother of our Lord, of St. Peter, and of all the saints, let us commend ourselves, one another, and our whole life to Christ our Lord. To, to you, O Lord. Lord. O God, from whom come all holy desires, all good counsels, and all just works, give to us, your servants, that peace which the world cannot give, that our hearts may be set to obey your commandments. And also that we, being defended from the fear of our enemies, may live in peace and quietness through the merits of Jesus Christ, our Savior, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, God, forever. Amen. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our, our Father, Father, who art, art in heaven, hallowed, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Rejoice, believers, and let your light appear. The evening is advancing, and darker night is here. The bridegroom is arising, and soon is drawing nigh. Up, pray, and watch, and wrestle, as midnight comes the Shall 
My friend, Pastor Lance, told me a story about his adult Bible study class at their church. You can picture it, a room filled with people your age and your concerns in life. Grandkids, retirement, social security, health and health care. You know the routine. So they began their study that day with the question, what is prayer? And wouldn't you know it, talking to God was the first answer. Fair enough. And after a moment, a few more answers came out. It's praise, it's thanksgiving, it's requests, it's petitions, it's healings, it's forgiveness, it's grace, and so on and so on. All of those children's Sunday school style answers from the adults as they wrote down on their study pages what the group had said. And as the answers slowed down, like those last kernels in a bag of microwave popcorn, Pastor Lance asked, is that it? Anything else? And after a brief moment, someone said, it's listening too. You know what, said Pastor Lance as he picked up his piece of paper. We've got this list upside down. Hmm. Yeah. Listening goes at the top of what prayer is. And so that's where this series, Positive Prayer, began. Too often we think prayer is telling God stuff he needs to know in order to do his job the right way. Thank you very much. Right? Instead, we have to listen first. Right? We wonder why our prayers lack positive power in our everyday lives. We're too busy putting on airs with all of our hot air. And when that doesn't work... We simply give up because we get discouraged. In order to listen, we've got to be quiet. So find some quiet. Take a deep breath. Turn off the screen, the TV, the phone, the music, whatever. Not forever, but just for a moment. Just for a moment. Right? In fact, that's why we've had those moments of silence here in this service. And in that moment of quiet, listen for the hopes and the dreams, the cares and concerns that are in you waiting. Indeed, more than waiting, longing, yearning, even aching to be heard without you even knowing it. As baptized believers, God's Word has already been at work in you, shaping your hopes and dreams, your cares and concerns and more. These things that you hear in the quiet being pulled up into your attention or because of God's word at work in you. The next thing that we need to unlock the, pos the positive power of prayer is to believe. That's a word that gets thrown around a lot in church, right? Believe, belief, faith, right? All the same thing, right? Believe is from German and English. Faith is from French and Latin. Same thing. So what is it? What does it mean to believe? What things do we believe? Well, that's more than we have time for tonight. So instead, let's establish some basics like we've done before. To believe something, for our purposes, has three components. First is to trust something or someone. Right? This is that infant, that childlike trust the Bible encourages in us. This can be very simple. It can be intuitive. It can even be the idea, right, that you just know that you know. And so it's often rooted in how things act or perform or what they do, right? In fact, we might even call this level of trust the roots. So next comes the knowledge part of believing, right, where we learn things about what we believe. This is how we know things about the something we believe and what things we know about it. This is a little more intellectual than intuitive. It's the thinking part of belief. We can call this part the tree, the branches. Then last is the allegiance, the loyalty part of faith. This is the, what am I going to do with what I know and what I trust? Although our belief is built trust, knowledge, allegiance, it's often this, uh, 
this action of ours, right, that shows and tells most of all what we really believe, where our faith really lies. We can call this third part the fruit on the tree. So we hear from St. Paul tonight, he writes, To this end, we always pray for you, asking that our God will make you worthy of his call and will fulfill by his power every good resolve and work of faith according to the grace of our God and the Lord Jesus Christ. That's belief language. St. Paul trusts God will hear and act with grace and in steadfast loving kindness. St. Paul knows the ways that God's grace and steadfast loving kindness happen. And St. Paul gives his allegiance to God for the sake of God's grace and steadfast loving kindness. That is, he calls upon God alone to listen and to act. Paul firmly believes, in fact, maybe we can say without a reasonable doubt, right? Paul firmly believes that God will deliver the people he prays for. I mean, why bother otherwise? Indeed, we might say for ourselves that we secretly believe nothing will happen, and so we always get that answer to our prayers. It's like the old joke about the farmers begging the pastor to pray for rain one Sunday. Don't you believe that God can make it rain for us poor farmers? They complain. Sure I do, says the pastor, but where are your umbrellas today? After we've listened to begin our prayers, the next thing is, is that we believe that God is helping us right now. That is, his steadfast loving kindness is for us. That as our good father, he does nothing to hurt or harm us. That with our eternal destiny in his hands, our earthly destiny will not fall out of them and will not thwart him. Indeed, he's already set limits to any evil and affliction we face. And his remedy is already prepared. By believing in God's own higher power to direct our days and our deeds in his peace, as the old prayer goes, we can also believe that by his same power, we are already being helped by him. And what's more is that by his help, we are already gaining a power over our problems. No, this is not some sort of prosperity gospel, some sort of transactional heavenly vending machine. We say the right things to command God to do stuff for us. It's not that at all. It's simply trusting, knowing, and giving allegiance to God, our Heavenly Father, who tells us to call upon Him in all things and at all times, just as we learn most perfectly in the Lord's Prayer. Now, just as the listening requires not only our quietness, but also our openness to the Holy Spirit's tugs and pulls and whispers, so too does our believing God's helping actions, believing in God's helping action requires as well an openness of us. To borrow from a favorite movie of mine, sometimes our thinking gets too uptight, man. See, we become fixated on a limited, narrow sense of God's help, trusting in our own notions of divine action rather than the divine actor himself. See, God's not obligated to fulfill any impossible wish of our own. But when a solution is impossible for us, it is possible for God. So people who are in tune to that positive power of prayer they have no shortage of true stories to tell you about how God answered their prayers in a way they couldn't imagine. And so they learn not to worry about a specific wished-for path to an outcome. Instead, they learn to believe that God is leading them and guiding them directly to the outcome according to His grace. You and I heard ourselves, right? We listened to St. Paul about God's power to fulfill every good resolve and work of faith by His grace. And now, we believe that God in His grace and love uses that power in our own everyday lives. Indeed, He is already using that power for us and on us in our own everyday lives. 
See, as baptized believers, we already have the Holy Spirit in us to open us up from our closed-off thinking and wishing, to open us up to God's higher power 24-7, and even to visualize that power affecting our outcomes, all according to the grace of God and of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us pray. Lord God, you have called your servants to ventures of which we cannot see the ending, by paths as yet untrodden, through perils unknown. Give us faith to go out with a good courage, not knowing where we go, but only that your hand is leading us and your love supporting us, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Almighty and merciful Lord, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit bless you now and forever. Amen. Amen.